Even if you're not a Superman fan, you may know that Superman 3 is considered a big drop in quality from the first two Superman films starring Christopher Reeve. The outright turn toward comedy and the major running time afforded to Richard Pryor's bumbling Gus Gorman character make the film seem out of place against the more earnest first one and the more action-packed second one. Many fans of the first two would probably like to pretend that the third one never happened. Count Brian Singer among those fans. When Singer got his opportunity to direct a Superman film, he made an homage to the first two films while cutting the third one out of his continuity completely. Or did he? What if there's a relationship between the films that no one has noticed or acknowledged? What if Superman Returns has more in common with Superman 3 than we think? I'm Tony Frazier, author, blogger, near genius, and this is Hero Go Home Presents Superman Returns, a Sinister Theory. So here's the basic plot of Superman Returns. Superman returns to Earth after five years in space, landing in Smallville near his mother's house. He resumes both his heroic activities as Superman and his job as Clark Kent, reporter for the Daily Planet, learns he has a son he left behind, and has to foil another plot by Lex Luthor. A couple of points to make here. From the beginning, the film makes sure we know that it is explicitly in continuity with the previous series of Superman films by opening with shots of Krypton from the first film, using Marlon Brando's voiceover from the first film, and using John Williams' Superman theme from the previous films. But then it just as explicitly departs the continuity of Superman 3, in which Martha Kent has died. This is the first time, excuse me, you've come back to this little bird since your mom passed away. Yeah, it's... So this is a universe in which Superman 3 never happened. That means no Gus Gorman and his yo-yo, no Lana Lang's single mother, no fake kryptonite producing an evil Superman, and no self-adapting supercomputer trying to destroy the world. The movie was ultimately not very successful with fans for a few reasons. Many fans were hoping to see what new approach director Brian Singer, fresh off of X-Men 1 and 2, would take to the material, but instead his film seems to be a slavish copy of Richard Donner's films, from Brandon Routh's Christopher Reeve impersonation to its many callbacks to the first film. Well, I certainly hope this little incident hasn't put you off flying, miss. Statistically, Statistically speaking, speaking, it's still the safest way to travel to Lex Luthor on both films plotting a huge real estate scam. At the same time, the entire film seems to be covered in a layer of flop sweat, making sure you notice this film is bigger, shinier, cooler. And there was a third objection people had to the film, which is that Superman seems to be a bit of a creep. He hovers outside Lois Lane's house and spies on her with his x-ray vision and super hearing. He even breaks into her home at one point. And maybe it's just the blue contacts Brandon Routh was made to wear, but he has this reptilian stare that just gets to me. Which brings us to Superman 3, because as people have pointed out, Superman's costume in Superman Returns is closer in color to the evil Superman in Superman 3 than the classic 1978 Superman. Which brings me to my question. What if the explanation for Superman's costume and his creepy behavior is that the Superman in Superman Returns is essentially the same as the evil Superman in Superman 3? Now wait, before you click out, give me a chance to explain. Note that I'm not saying this is the correct explanation, not a likely one or even a valid one. I'm just exploring the question for entertainment purposes only, as Miss Cleo would say. But give me a minute to at least make my case. I can hear you saying, but he's not really evil in Superman Returns. He has a couple of creepy moments, but most of the time he's a good guy. First thing to understand is that when we say evil Superman, it's really a kind of shorthand. Even in Superman 3, evil Superman is not really evil so much as just a dick. He's not blowing up shopping malls or breaking dams or killing people. He straightens out the Leaning Tower of Pisa to screw with the souvenir guy. He blows out the Olympic torch and he sleeps with a girl and then doesn't call her the next day. Which makes, say, throwing the dog's ball a hundred miles seem perfectly in character. But aha, you say, how would Superman even become evil in the first place? Glad you asked. In Superman 3, Superman changes after being exposed to artificial kryptonite made by the villain. The movie explains its evil effect as Gus Gorman having substituted tar for an unknown element in the kryptonite formula. But is this necessarily the only explanation? 
Let's talk about kryptonite for a second. In the comics, kryptonite came in five colors. There are more now, but I'm talking back in the 80s. All had different effects, but one in particular, red kryptonite, is what concerns us here. Red kryptonite had random temporary effects. It could turn him into a baby or a gorilla or even, as concerns us here, evil. But phrase, you say, the kryptonite that turned Superman evil in Superman 3 wasn't red, it was green. Valid point. But who's to say that the movies would stay consistent with the colors as they were depicted in the comics? For that matter, who's to say that the effect of the tar substitution, rather than changing the kryptonite's effect, just changed its color to green? What does this have to do with Superman Returns? Well, in Superman 3, Gus Gorman doesn't get the formula for kryptonite by analyzing this. He does it by analyzing debris in the vicinity of the former Krypton's explosion, remotely by satellite and sight unseen, which means he doesn't know what color of kryptonite he's analyzing or whether it's actually even kryptonite at all. The point of all this is that in Superman 3, Gus Gorman analyzes an object in space in the vicinity of the former Krypton, which, when he replicates it on Earth, does this. In Superman Returns, Superman physically travels to the vicinity of the former Krypton, where he could well have been exposed to the same substance. And when he returns, he looks like this and acts like this. And check out the way his ship is glowing on his return. Can we say with certainty that this red glow is solely due to heat from re-entry? What's fascinating is the way this colors virtually everything else Clark slash Superman does over the entire film. The way he spies on Lois, the dirty looks he shoots at Richard. What did he do to the guy who shot him in the eyeball after he made this creepy smile? Did he really have to tear both wings off that plane, or was he just playing Panic the Passengers? Creepiest of all is perhaps this. Hey, Chief. Thank you for giving me my job back. Don't thank me. Thank Norm Palmer for dying. Clark returns after five years, and a reporter just happens to die just in time for Clark to get his old job back. Isn't the timing a little too convenient? Anyway, that's it for me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And for more commentary, you can visit me at HeroGoHome.com. I said before that I would ask for subscribers if I got to a month of weekly videos, and this pretty much gets me there. So hit subscribe if you want to see more. I have one more week of Superman, and then we're going to segue to some other things. I'm Tony Frazier. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. You make me whole again.